Hey, this is John Five for Guitar World Magazine. And today we're going to be talking about my collection of Telecasters. I also have a new record called Requiem coming out June 3rd. Thanks a lot. The way I got into guitar collecting at first was I was playing Telecasters and older guitars and I was very interested and I always liked reading about them and, and <laughs> Jasper, but yeah. And I had this huge poster collection of Kiss and I sold that for like $75,000 or something like that and I wanted to buy old Telecasters. This one is a 1953. Now this guitar, it's so blonde, this guitar looks like it hasn't even been out of the case that long because of the fact it has not yellowed that much. Well, the first one I purchased was this one here. It's a 1966 Fender Esquire and I bought it for like, you know, $5,000. You know, it's probably worth like thirteen dollars or $14,000 now. This is probably my oldest guitar and this is my holy grail, you know, everyone has their holy grail of guitars, but just the case alone is worth an absolute fortune. This is a Fender Broadcaster. The first solid body electric guitar came out in 1949. It was called a Snakehead. And it was white, had a black pick card, and it was, you know, the shape of a Telecaster. And in 1950, this was our first electric guitar, first solid body electric guitar. Looks like, you know, any of these, because I guess they did it right the first time. They made about 150 of these guitars. The reason why is because up here it says broadcaster. Leo Fender loved TV and radio, so he named it broadcaster, but Gretsch made a drum set named the broadcaster. So what happened was they sued Fender. And so Fender had to stop making broadcasters immediately. I got this from Norman's Rare Guitars, and um, they say it's the cleanest broadcaster ever seen. So it's completely original, and it was um, the priciest of any of my guitars. I paid about 135000 but it's worth it. These guitars are really going up in value a lot. So I started, you know, wanting to get different ears and different colors and things like that because um, I have such a collective personality. And so I started acquiring more and more Telecasters and I just could not stop. This is a 71. This is a 73. This one is a 76. 1967 custom Telecaster. That one there is actually owned by Mick Mars at one time. 1968 Thin Line. This one is a 59. This is a 78. In 1978, they had this line called International Colors. And here is, uh, they did like blue, they did orange, and I think I have a, a white one around here too. They did an Olympic white. Yes, that's the Olympic white one right there like a drug addict just find myself doing these crazy sessions just for the money you know just so I can go buy some you know Telecasters or something. Uh, these are all blackguards they call them blackguard tellies they made blackguards from 1950 to 1954. This is a 1952 Esquire you're not really gonna find them much nicer than this I, I, I haven't seen them. I got a really good deal on this one I, I paid I think around 30,000 for it, but it's probably worth, you know, 60, 65. And this is a 54 Blackguard Esquire. And just in beautiful, beautiful condition. The only year of the Blackguard I am missing is the 1951, which they call the No Caster. When Fender got sued, they took the Broadcaster out, so it just said Fender. So it kind of looked just like that and that's what they called it a no-caster, and that was in 1951. 
And I find no casters, but I have not found one in this condition, so that's what I'm looking for. That's the only black guard I'm missing. So, uh, you know, anybody out there has a beautiful no caster, that's what I'm looking for. I just love collecting these telecasters. It's my passion, for sure.